hey, 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 good people. Grits or cream of wheat? Who the hell is racist? Does anyone ever ask could they touch your hair? <laughs> Woo. Black Like Me. You're listening to Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G., a podcast that invites you to experience the world through the perspective of one black man, one conversation, one story, or even one rant at a time. Here's Dr. G. One of the things that touched me the most when I arrived at the airport in Ghana was the fact that drummers and dancers and singers basically serenaded this plane of 270 black Americans who had come to Ghana for the year of the return, 400 years after the beginning of the 1619 transatlantic slave trade. Our second event was a place where elders just lined up, shook our hands and just said, welcome, 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 and welcome home. So not just welcome to this space, but they said to us, this is home. And it was deeply, deeply moving and grounding and probably was one of my my most powerful experiences. We even were serenaded with a song that just kept repeating the phrase, welcome home, welcome home. And it just caused me to think deeply and reflect on what was stolen from me culturally in terms of a sense of homeland. And that not only were our bodies taken and our children and our dreams, but our connection with the homeland. So being told welcome home um, was medicine to our black American souls. And so I want you to listen to this this poem that I wrote in response to it. Um, And and I I sort of throw off some comments um, to those who have denied the power of Africa, the relevance of Africa, and our need as black people to always stay connected with the motherland. And so enjoy this original poem that I wrote entitled Welcome Home, Aquaba. Aquaba, Welcome Home to Ghana by Alexander G. Hello, my sons and daughters, across the deep sea waters. Now, don't you know the motherland is home? Your mother won't forget you, and one day God will let you return to me no matter where you roam. By Verlene G., my mother. I went home last week. I visited Ghana and West Africa. Mother hadn't forgotten me at all. Welcome home. You're in Africa. Enjoy it. Make yourself at home. Home humbled me. When I think of home, it isn't an address. Home isn't brick and mortar and living rooms and garages. Home is the portal through which you enter and then engage the world each day. And home is the portal through which you return to decompress from the atrocities of the world each day. Home is where you look at yourself in the mirror before taking on the day. And home is where you never second guess yourself. Home is where you never have to make excuses for yourself. Home is where you never dumb down. And home is where you are the majority and majority rules. Books live in libraries. Merchandise lives in stores. Groceries live in supermarkets. But our intact, non-apologetic, irrepressible, culturally ordained, hence our truest selves, come alive at home. Home is not merely where we live. Home is where we come alive. Home humbled me in Ghana because I didn't know I was so homeless. I was taught in school that Africa was ugly. I was shown only the atrocities and poverty of Africa. I was warned against the darkness of Africa. Mother Africa was so strong and so rich and so fertile and so ridden with potential that white explorers wanted to tame mother and own mother and prostitute mother and reduce mother. These evil white explorers and traders wreaked havoc on both sides of the Atlantic. White traders stopped wanting to trade with Mother Africa and decided to remove the middleman by colonizing Mother Africa and ravaging her shores and mines and trees and seeds and sons and daughters and kings and queens. Colonizers raped Mother Africa, her children and her land. Motherfuckers. Those who survived the evil brutality of supposedly religious slave traders in Africa 
then had to endure the rigor of unimaginably inhumane conditions of the transatlantic slave ship and its crews. Then those who survived the evil voyage by avoiding sickness or the temptation of throwing themselves overboard to safety were then left to deal with the greedy, lustful white tyrants in the new land. These were white men and compliant white women who had purchased imported property made in the image and likeness of God, mind you, to make them rich in cotton and free labor. Correction. Slavery didn't just make slave traders, slave ship captains or slave owners rich. Slavery. Correction. Hardworking black people made America rich and converted America into a world superpower. Because the strongest of the strongest Africans landed on the shores of the new colony. For the chance to become American, many white Europeans would deny their mother, their language and their customs and their own culture. Being white would suffice if it meant access, superiority and power in America. Mother Africa's children weren't so weak. We refused to deny our mother. The new land tyrants wanted nothing to do with the power of Mother Africa, so they attempted to stop her children's gibberish, separated her children further, pit Africans against Africans, and cast shame on the mother's sun-kissed skin. What they didn't know, because they could not understand, because they'd run away from their home, we were kidnapped from our home and sold into bondage. I don't know about Mrs. Europe. However, Mother Africa called to her children over the waters in their dreams, in their songs, in their prayers, in their souls and in their DNA. And because Mother Africa knew that it would be centuries before any of us would see her kind face or embrace her strong neck or kiss her warm, dark cheeks again. She clothed us with pride, a sense of family, faith, respect and hard work. And she gave us a love for our mother Africa that made Uncle Sam feel threatened. How can Sam be our uncle if he refused to own our mother as his sister? So their insecurities blossomed. Thus, they outlawed our languages, monitored our gatherings, sanctioned our religion, raped our women, dispirited our children, raped our children, belittled our songs and owned our bodies, but never our minds and spirits. They couldn't break us because Mother Africa had put us together so fearfully and wonderfully and they didn't understand us and were troubled by the fact that they couldn't break us. And believe me, those motherfuckers tried. And when it was unbearable, we told Mother Africa with our sighs and our tears and with our songs and with our drums. Her frantic heartbeat for her stolen children resonated on the drums of her sons and daughters as they played and danced into the dark sky. The songs Mother Africa had taught them. The syncopation of the rhythmic and mystically majestic drums conjured Mother Africa's spirit as if the thousands of miles across the sea and the thousands of leagues beneath the sea didn't stand between us. We loved Mother Africa and she loved us. And that was adequate compensation for being so unloved in the new world. So 400 years to the month. After we were snatched from her arms, Mother Africa, through her tribal leaders and keepers of culture, welcomed me and my family and 250 other African-Americans home. Mother didn't just see her children. We saw our mother and our home. I didn't know that mother had been looking for me to return because she could not come to where I was. <sighs> home humbled me. When I think of home, it isn't an address. Home isn't brick and mortar and living rooms and garages. Home is the portal through which you enter and engage the world each day. And home is the portal through which you return to decompress from the atrocities of the world each day. Home is where you look at yourself in the mirror before taking on the day. And home is where you never second guess yourself. Home is where you never have to make excuses for yourself. And home is where you never dumb down. Home is where you are the majority. And the majority rules. Books live in libraries. Merchandise lives at stores. Groceries live in supermarkets. 
but are intact, non-apologetic, irrepressibly, culturally ordained, hence our truest selves come alive at home. Home is where I can decompress from a lifetime of atrocities and unfair treatment so that I can engage the struggle with a renewed sense of self, power, and purpose. Home humbled me in Ghana because I didn't know I was so homeless. I went home last week and was reminded of who I am. I'm at home in my own skin wherever I go. Home is not merely where we live. Home is where we come alive.